Hi, everybody, and welcome. I think everybody here knows me pretty well, but if you don't, my name is Kelly Kolodny, and um, I've been channeling since 1989, and a few years ago, I downloaded 33 codes of light that have been coming in over the last few years, and I've been sharing them with most of you. And today, we are tapping into the solar eclipse frequency, which is um, incredibly powerful and beautiful. On many levels, I received some important information from Grandmother Spider. Uh, Grandmother Spider is so loving. It's a, a very beautiful indigenous goddess that came in about a month and a half ago before I left for Ireland, made it herself very known that she wanted to come through for the solar eclipse and help us return to Mother Gaia um, and to more of our original ways and has an activation that I, I am preparing with Grandmother Goddess that I will work with all of you on, on the solar eclipse at 1 p.m. Eastern time. But what I want to talk about today before we, I invite Dr. Alex Ling to come in and share all of his wisdom and knowledge about the solar eclipse is that the energies are so potent and so powerful that you may be feeling them already. It's not as this, this is just the singular one moment of those two or three or four and a half minutes, um, but we're feeling it as we're moving into it and we're going to feel the effects of it afterwards. And it's such a very, very potent and beautiful time, especially in that zero point moment, right? To go inward, to go into stillness and to prepare so he has this incredible movement uh, called the hum movement, which we're going to talk about in this amazing water. Um, so just start tuning into Mother Gaia, feeling her frequency. As Grandmother Spider came in, she said, we're going to go through this enormous leap, this acceleration that's going to happen during this time. And when you think about the solar eclipse, everything kind of goes quiet, right? It goes still, even the birds sort of stop chirping. And even Dr. Alex Ling is going to be in the zone of silence. I think that that's uh, more than a coincidence. And so as we tune into that stillness and that silence, that darkness in that moment, it's a an opportunity for a reset um, in our collective consciousness. And we get to choose to take time out during that time with intent to be really clear on what we're setting and intending, not just personally, but more importantly, collectively, as we move through these great changes in our consciousness um, it feels like a really, really big leap. <laughs> and even the the spiders themselves, as Grandmother Spider was saying, they may even uh, destroy their webs, which I find fascinating during that time, um, which is really interesting how that aligns with her frequency coming in is that we are uh, dissolving a certain matrix, a certain web that has been put in place for a very long time. And we're creating a new one, a new grid line, and we're connecting to the original grid lines. So um, I'm really excited about this energy. And I know there's a lot of stuff out there in the spiritual communities and sometimes on YouTube that's very fear-based around it. And I really, really encourage you not to tap into any of that. This is not like the world is ending or some big explosion or flood is happening on that in that moment. <laughs> um, it's it's an opportunity for us to hold a much higher frequency of that for unity, consciousness, and love. So stay focused. Don't get sidetracked into all these little weird things and just stay on on track in the love frequency. All right. So without further ado, I want to invite Dr. Alex Ling. Uh, Debishri met him in Glastonbury, where he lives. Um, he is the founder of this incredible water, which he's going to share with us. I think it's all sold out, but we can learn about it and perhaps get it at another time. And uh, I want to hear from you so much about your perspective on the solar eclipse, what's happening and how we can prepare. So thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for coming here. I know you've had some trouble with your uh, Wi-Fi and <laughs> the grid's already collapsing for you, right? <laughs> Can you hear? I think you have to unmute. There we go. Yes. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for having me today. I hope you can hear me okay because uh, we had a few Wi-Fi issues. And I think because the sun is quite active, we had a lot of solar flares over the last few days, which is affecting already our uh, matrix, the matrix, the artificial matrix. Um, and that's what it's all about, really, uh, coming to the solar eclipse. 
uh, it's like a window opportunity really for humanity to to reconnect with Mother Earth. And uh, that's really what we all need to aim for. So it's the Earth grid, which is the most important to us to reconnect us to that and to connect to each other, of course. So that window opportunity is uh, going to happen within the totality of four minutes, 28 seconds, uh, point one actually. Um, and uh, the longest duration is uh, within the zone of silence, as you pointed out, a very fitting uh, area and name for the silence, which is going to occur um, while the uh, total, uh, 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 total eclipse is going to happen. Uh, so the uh, area is in near Mexi Mexico, uh, sorry, in Mexico near Mapimi and uh, Torreon. Uh, so it's connected to a uh, magnetic field, which is within the desert area. It's quite a large stretch. And it's very unusual because the energies are affecting all the plant life, uh, the animals within the area, so much so that there is a bio biosphere, um, a, a, reser a reservoir, um, sorry, a reserve, which is a laboratory. So they are studying the, the uh, plant life in that area and the animals as well, because they are mutated to uh, some extra, extra uh, uh, kind of they're a lot larger in the area than anywhere else and a lot more colorful. So there's uh, purple cacti and just incredible um, diversity because of that magnetic field. So there's so I'll, much about that, right? They say that even um, there's a lot of activity in that area, and oh, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. incredible, like a, a portal to yeah. their other worlds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is uh, uh, the mountain which we're going to climb on that day. Uh, it's about one thousand four hundred and forty, which is a very strange number. Um, very uh, now, <laughs> uh, so meters high and. Um, it's quite a hike, it's not an easy one, but the whole area is, uh, as you pointed out, there's all sorts of um, stories attack, uh, attached to it. Uh, so from UFO sightings, which people witness on a regular basis, to um, apparently play aids being, uh, have been seen in the area as well, uh, and being in contact with some of the local people. So. Um, other than that is yes it's like a huge portal and i think this is what it's all about because within the um <clears throat> four minute 28 uh seconds um something quite extraordinary is going to happen uh the ionosphere all the electrons which are in the ionosphere are going to space out and give an opportunity for us to connect to the earth grid um it means that uh, in that in that way, the electrons are spacing out, and the artificial grid, which is responsible for our Wi-Fi system, GPS systems, and all these kind of technology which we're having, um, is on its lowest activity. So that, that's why we have blackouts and all these kind of things probably on that day. Um, and uh, for us, it means that we can reconnect to Gaia, and that is quite an unusual window opportunity and it doesn't happen very often that we have a solar maximum and uh, a new moon happening at the same time so mm -hmm. that's why it's quite unusual and also it has been mentioned 14,000 years ago in some of the uh, ancient text uh, Sumerian texts for example of and, this particular solar eclipse is that what you're speaking of was mentioned yes. That's right. So uh, when I went to Gobekli Tepe, I studied some of the um, the ancient sites there, and uh, one of the uh, the pillars forty three pillars what forty three in Gobekli on on the side of Gobekli Tepe is actually talking from this event. I've talked to quite a number of archaeologists who are slightly more open minded, uh, and now that um, there's a lot of uh, stuff happening which I don't want to go into because we would be you know needing hours to explain it. But um, everything in history gets kind of, um, let's say, directed or manipulated in such a way that it fits our history line, okay? Um, mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of other things in, in, in this field, in, in archaeology, which would tell a, a completely different story. Absolutely. But, but because of, um, let's say, the people who wouldn't like us to have all the whole picture, um, they, they like to hide a big part of it. And so a lot of it uh, comes down really to some fines, which don't even get um, put put into local museums or any museums, they, they get usually sold off to some private collectors and will be never seen again. And that happens quite a lot, especially in Turkey. So there's a lot of uh, situations which kind of come together. Um, for example, the, most of the archaeological digs in Turkey are sponsored also by Siemens AG, um, just happen to also be responsible for the electronics from the Large Hadron Collider in CERN, which just happened to fire up the new accelerator, guess when, just exactly on that day. On the solar eclipse, I had read that. So yeah. just curious to clarify, you're saying that Inko Bekele Tepe, and for those in the audience who aren't familiar with that, that's an archeological site in Turkey um, that's very old and beautiful. We did a, a, a what's called a light code uh, teachings on that for about a month. And um, you're saying that the pillar 43, there's something indicative or carved or on it that tells us that something during this particular solar eclipse is going to unfold. Is that what you're saying? Just to. Yes, I have to explain that just a little bit. Um, so within the, the event of, of human history, there are two sites, which is Karahan Tepe and Gebekli Tepe. So both tepes are just about an hour away from each other. Mm -hmm. There are 13 or more. We don't know even how many tepes still unexcavated. So they're just kind of, uh, there's no information available about it. But um, there are numerous uh, indications in, in form of texts and things which haven't been publicized. Um, so that it, it has to do with the um, solar eclipse. And the reason for that is, I'm sorry, that's my dog trying to get to me. <laughs> if you can hear that, um, just have to make space so she doesn't fall over the cable. Um, so, sorry. No uh, <laughs> so on pillar 43, there is a, uh, a carving which shows um, a bird. And many people argue it could be um, a, a phoenix, it could be um, a swan, all sorts of different uh, opinions are, are about. I think it looks like a phoenix, to be honest, um, in that way. And it's holding on its wing a sphere. So for many years, people didn't know really what the sphere is representing. Many thought it was the moon or the earth. But of late, and with the documentation which is available, uh, and from the history of the site, and that's the point. Um, so it seems to be that it's the sun. And the sun, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and the sun, um, in that time, then Karahan Tepe was, for example, uh, they evacuated the site and they went to go, because Karahan Tepe, I have to explain that quickly, is 2,000 years older than Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe uh, dates 11,600 years mm -hmm. and Karahan Tepe is even older. So just about 14,000 years, which kind of coincides with the ice melt or the great flood. Mm. And that time there was already a solar maximum and we know that because uh, as of late Norwegian scientists have actually proven that uh, there was uh, quite a big event a solar event happening in that time so about 40,000 years ago um, because they found some fossilized wood and they could see that there was a huge spike in carbon in that time so mm -hmm also kind of fits with the story of the Great Flood. So they think that there was a sudden ice melt, which then was leading to a flood. It, it's not that this time a flood would happen, but right. in, that, in that time it did happen. Um, and they had to go uh, into higher higher ground, which they did, because Quebec de Tepe is uh, in a higher situation, higher uh, position. And, uh, and also it fits in with so many other stories which, which occurred in that time. Interesting. I, I just would love to ask you what your impression is of how the solar eclipse will affect the different water bodies. Like, um, 
Do you have any idea during that moment of, you know, the, the full eclipse, if, if there will be, we know it will affect the animals and the soil and the, the, yes. the creatures. Yeah. How about the water? Okay. The water is definitely affected because in the time of totality, the frequency uh, is changing as well. And that will have an impact, a global impact, not just in, in Mexico, but the, uh, um, there is a specific sound, and that's why we come to the hum in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, specific sound, which is from the uh, gravitational field up uh, out of the universe, which has been recorded like a year ago, and uh, and that note is uh, close to C four, lowercase uh, or lower note of the C four, which does happen to be the same sound as if you would play a wooden wooden uh, flute, mm -hmm. um, an ancient instrument. Um, Again, so many synchronicities around the world with all the indigenous tribes who were using the flute. Um, also, for example, the same sound, which is connected to the bees, the humming of the bees. Uh, then we have the waves crashing onto the beach. That's kind of the same. Um, there, there are so many uh, sounds in nature, which, um, what's that? Sorry. Oh, the cat's purring, sorry, yes. <laughs> yes, the cat's purring, that's another one, which is also the same frequency. So there is not a specific, I get asked all the time, is there a specific note or, or, or how can we, how do we know like exactly what frequency? The closest is 256. Don't use 265, that's wrong. It's 256, it's if you want to be really precise, but that's the point here now is that there's so many harmonics. Mm. And when it's this sound, um, I'm coming back to the water just in a minute, but uh, if, if we have the sound and we are humming with a lot of people, we have done two different experiments. One is uh, we have given the instruction and we said, okay, this is exactly the sound you have to, to hum. And the other group didn't have any kind of instruction. It was exactly the same. So we all have this natural, because it's primordial sound, we have this connection. And that's when I come to the water because it's a frequency which came from the water or through the waters. It's a cosmic ocean, which has the same blueprint, the same information of that particular sound. And that's where it all comes beautiful together. And the zone of silence, and that's a really new kind of information. There was a tribe which lived there, which are called, uh, the people are called Lagoneros. So they are, the people, uh, the lake people. And uh, there's a lot of folklore known about this. Um, and some of the descendants who just contacted me uh, were talking about this particular tribe. And they, in folklore, they were half fish and half human. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, there are lots and lots of underground hot springs and water tables and cave systems which have, have huge lakes all in that desert. So we be trying to while they're there, we're trying to get more information, but there is that's not a coincidence. So that that is definitely everything seems to kind of come together to that point. That's so interesting because we recently were on a magical journey and we were connecting with the sacred waters. And I've never been tapped into the sea people or the mer people or the mermaids. It's just not something that I relate to, but we had a very strong experience on our journey with one of them. And it from what I, we were talking yesterday with Veda Austin, and one of the things that Raphael was saying um, that was coming through is that whether it be the beings within the water or the beings from the stars or the elementals, that all of these beautiful energies that have in many ways been kind of suppressed and the veil's been so thick and we haven't been able to tap into them are kind of showing themselves again and they're coming back up and when you I want you to explain to everybody in detail about this sound and the hum in a second but one of the things that I was receiving this morning around the hum was that as we will invite and you will invite and you have this beautiful movement and we're so grateful to you to have so many people coming in to do this humming sound during the eclipse which will radiate so much love out into the world 
perhaps while doing it, we might want to hold water or hold a piece of soil or a flower or anything else that we can like translate that frequency and get that energy moving between all the elements simultaneously while we're humming, which just seems like that would be so beautiful. Yeah. So tell us about it, what, how, what people should be doing at that time and how it works and everything. So uh, there is no specific guideline because we want to encourage people to take back, res uh, to be responsible themselves as well and to, um, to just kind of connect uh, with their own intuition. And uh, also it's about um, claiming back the power as, as humans and the connection we have to each other. So, because we've been controlled for such a long time and that is what it's really about. So the whole movement is, is exactly standing, standing for that. Um, so, which also means that we do not need any leaders or gurus or any kind of big egos to tell us exactly what to do because we have all the tools we need inside us. And we all create us, we can all create. We have all this, element is blueprint of creation within us in the water. So, and that's, that's what I try to bring across to people. And so, so yes, if you, if you are happen to be next to some water, if you are going to a spring or a lake or the ocean, uh, even if you just hold a glass of water and just put good intention into the water in inside yourself and into the earth, uh, then manifest, that's the manifestation which we need to manifest a positive future, a free future and a joint future because we had so much so much um, uh, um, division over, over the last uh, kind of uh, four years especially. So we were, we were kind of separated so much through certain events around the world. And I think it's time now to rejoin and to kind kind of go forward as as one, and that's what it's really about. And that's so beautiful, and that's exactly it. And can you imagine if millions of people around the globe simultaneously, whether they're in the solar eclipse or in North America, Mexico, Canada, whatever, are able to come together at that specific moment, tune into Mother Nature, connect with Gaia, uh, attune to an element if they feel called to, and make that primordial sound imprint that frequency and have that radiate and web out right across the grid system of the planet what a magnificent beautiful opportunity um and so we just want as many people to tap in and to do that as possible everywhere and so is there i think you've set up a community where people can do that if they don't want to if they're not sure how to do it or they don't want to be alone they can tap in right um to others. Yes, you can go on our website which is uh, hum2024.com and uh, so you can find it's just literally been up put up a few days ago and uh, that's just for people to connect if they don't know where to go to go and they can join others and um, or, or talk about the experience. Now, this is also very important. <clears throat> the uh, eclipse is like the opening. It's like a portal. We all go through it. But it is important that we maintain this energy mm -hmm. and that it continues. So we, we, we encourage people to just go and come together, let's say uh, every solstice or equinox or on a daily basis, if you like, and hum as much as you can. Everybody has like a few minutes a day, you know, when you can just continue that sound. Because as in water, if you if you embed, if you kind of blueprint the water with the sound, it ripples out. And if you do it again, and even if you don't need even as many people as the first time, you just continuously kind of uh, spread that frequency <clears throat> and that energy around the planet in all the waters around the planet and within the planet as well. So, and that's what it's also about. So don't just expect it all to happen on that day. It's a progress. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, that's a wonderful reminder, everybody. So you're going to be feeling the energies before you can start humming now and connecting into Mother Gaia. And then, of course, during that time, and then I'll have my activation an hour and a half prior to that to get everybody 
ready. And so, so many places, we're all tapping in in different places to bring unity consciousness. So thank you so much, my God. And, and water is everything right now, right? Everyone is just water, water, water all the time. So tell me about your water. I know that people can't even get it. And I just talked to a friend who was able to get some after listening to you on Pam Gregory. And she's like, there's something to this water. I don't know what it is. I feel amazing. And I said, I know I want to get my hands on it, but I can't. So tell us about the water, please. Um Yes, the water is, uh, we restructured the water, so uh, we bring back, uh, we bring it back into its natural form. So uh, when we have, for example, if it is even spring water and it's been uh, put through being pumped up to the surface, uh, we still need to restructure it because it loses some of the structure. So, and that's what we do. Um, the only water which is structured you can get is basically from a spring of free flowing kind of river systems or or, or streams so um, because it constantly forms vortices and that's when it kind of gets structured all the time in the ocean as well so we then have we have a, a spring which is in Cornwall which has excellent water and uh, so we use that to uh, restructure the water and uh, we have a magnetic field which we leading the water through and uh, this will um, literally uh, prepare the water. It kind of uh, activates the water on a, on a molecular level quite, quite intensely so that it then can absorb the other elements which we are fusing into the water as well. So, which is um, frankincense, myrrh, and gold, monoatomic gold. Mm -hmm. um, so frankincense uh, and myrrh are both, of course, ancient supplements. And uh, we have it in its natural form, in form of resins. Uh, so we needed to create it. Um, uh, we needed to uh, find a way to make it water soluble. Now that took quite a while to find the right way of doing it because it needs to connect to water. So when we have found that, um, it, it took uh, about two years or so to get the process correct. And uh, then we have the, the gold as a bridging tool and stabilizes the water. Now, everybody who has tried or has used Aquan knows that it's slightly thicker than ordinary water because it's almost like a plasma. Mm. Um, so, and that was the intention that we use, use this uh, knowledge, which is partially coming from alchemy to change the, the building blocks of, of the water in such a way that it's it's giving you um, a uh, incredible platform to have a blueprint. And that blueprint is the myrrh and the gold and the frankincense, which then can be absorbed by your body quite easily. So the bioavailability is very big, very large. And um, so you benefit on a physical level, but also on a spiritual level. So what it does, uh, for example, is on a physical le level, it, it, uh, I can't make any claims, but frankincense is known to be a, an amazing anti-inflammatory. Um, myrrh, for example, is known to um, have properties which are very beneficial in the fight of cancer, for example. Um, so, and, uh, and we then when we fused it all together, so we also, uh, when we had our first 100 who took it, um, friends and clients who were uh, so kind to, to be the guinea pigs. Um, then we also noticed that it had an amazing effect on your spiritual mind or your spiritual body. And that is due to the, um, to the mirror because the mirror works together with your GABA receptors in your brain. And it kind of builds a bridge between the unconscious, subconscious and conscious level which then stimulates you, for example, to promote self-healing, but also <clears throat> it activates your, your pineal gland and uh, it, it opens up your, your crown chakra. That's something which many people notice the first time and they take it, they say, oh, I have this tingling up on my head mm -hmm. and I can feel how the water goes down in my body. It connects to all the different cells in my body. So it is quite, a, um, quite an unusual experience uh, some people have stronger experiences than others, but um, it's definitely very beneficial, especially when you want to connect to the frequencies around you. 
your senses are getting much sharper. So I noticed that my hearing, my, my sense of smell, my taste, everything kind of was uh, really kind of amplified. And uh, it's just like um, I had a big detox uh, in a way so that my spiritual body was just kind of suddenly much more awake and I could think much clearer because sometimes I had a little bit of brain fog because I suffered from, uh, I had uh, Lyme disease. So mm. I kind of still was lingering a little bit. Um, so since I've used the Aquan, it's just completely vanished. So it's, it's quite incredible of, on many, many levels. Um, so yes, that's why people love it so much because it's a pretty instant effect when you take it. This is amazing. Yeah. So people are having all types of different spiritual and health benefits. And when do you think you'll have it stocked back up again now that it's, it's all gone? Yes. Um, we, uh, we trying our hardest because we still have quite a, a lot of, um, people waiting for it. So we have, if you, if, if people want it, the best thing they can do is just write us an email. No. Oh no. Sorry. I'm no. hearing no. <laughs> Please don't email. Oh, I can hear please. my other half saying, no, please don't email anymore. No, <laughs> because... no just click on the, the item that you want and a, a message will pop up saying, please add me to your email okay. list. So if you, if you click on the item which you would like to purchase, then it will um, take you to another part where you will be added to a list. And that's the best we can do at the moment. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we are able to um, be on top of all the orders within two weeks. Oh, that's not long. Not long at all. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so um, it was very unexpected. We weren't expecting such um, <laughs> such such in, in, impact from, from Pam Gregory's um, uh, um, followers. So... And uh, and we had other people, of course, as well, um, which which I started to have a lot of interviews over the last few weeks, and everybody's kind of waiting for it, which is really great, and I'm I'm very very happy about it that the message goes out there. But um, yes, so we're just a small company, and we're trying our best. We don't want to compromise the quality of our products, so that's why everything is handmade, and everything just takes a little while to produce. So that's why we, we just said, please just give us a moment to catch up. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. So tell us if there's anything else you want to share about the eclipse or how we should prepare or, you know, I think, Debbie, you had a question, right? You wanted to ask about the Mer people. <laughs> Did I record? Uh -huh. No, actually, I have a question about the water. Can I just go back to that for a second? So, Alex, sure. what you're saying is that you are restructuring the water. Uh, is it in a way that it is, then it remains perpetually structured? Like, does it develop a, like a scalar quality? So yeah. even after it's worked on and bottled and then still, does it stay structured? Yes, that is exactly the point. That's why our research took so long, because we didn't want it to feel to collapse. Uh, mm -hmm. So because the magnetic field will also collapse within two days. Uh, so within that time, when we researched it, we found a way to stabilize that field. And the only way to do that is to produce almost like a, a water plasma, which we, we basically did, the first part of it. Um, so, and when we had it tested in, in the lab, in the laboratory, um, we, we were really, really surprised because it's still evolving. So all the tests came back and they were really surprised. Uh, so they, um, they text, they messaged us back in an email and they said they never ever seen anything like it because it is just constantly evolving into the next step. So which is quite, quite interesting. And uh, that was exactly the, the um, expected kind of outcome which I was uh, working for. So that the water is consciousness and that this consciousness is um, developing into something which is working fully together with us on a physical and 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 uh, a spiritual level. So it's and and everybody who's taking it now for quite some time. Um, so you don't have to take it on a regular basis anyway. So once you have primed your system, 
people just uh, use it every other day. Some people have a break for a week or if they feel like they're, there's no real guideline because once you have aqua in your system, it seems to kind of just connect to, to all the waters in your, in your body, uh, to the waters in your body uh, on, on an ongoing basis. Thank you. It's like a blueprint, if you like. Got it. Do you have anything else, Devashree, that you wanted to ask? Um, yeah, and then the other thing was uh, about the zone of silence. I mean, I think that's really intriguing, especially about what's going on with the waters below it. Can you just yeah. elaborate on that a little bit? Because we were in a similar landscape in Ireland at the Burren, which was also under underwater for 360 million years. Yes, that's right. Yes, it's, I think um, we try to find out more and it's really difficult because there's very little information about it. Um, but we heard that there are local people who are using these hot springs on an ongoing basis. So we're just uh, preparing basically to, <clears throat> to talk to the people when we are in, in Mexico. Um, once we're in the in zone of silence, uh, we have uh, our um, friend who is uh, Ricardo Anzo. He's an amazing uh, scientist. So he's going to come with us. And uh, we bring a lot of equipment with us to, um, to take samples from the water to kind of see what kind of frequencies are around, uh, not just in the, uh, in, in the field of, of the zone of silence, but also within the waters. And uh, we, we plan to do quite a lot of uh, research. I'm sorry, I have to just drink some water. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> yes, I, I had a cold this morning. And please excuse me for a moment. <coughs> oh, very sorry about that. Give me one moment. If you have another question. Yeah, no, just, just take your time. <coughs> breathe into to it and <coughs> oh. no hurry. Yeah. Clearly need the water. It's interesting, right? <laughs> but you know, I woke up yesterday and I had a terrible cold. And today I feel a lot better, but I still have this tickle in my, my throat from time to time. So which is <clears throat> because I'm talking so much to people. And I had so many, so many interviews over the last few days. I can so, only but, imagine. Yeah. I'm good now. <laughs> okay. All perfect. Yes. Excuse. Uh, apologies for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so where were we? Uh, the water, yes. And the, 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 um, the hot springs and everything which is connected to that. So we're hoping to get a lot more information about it. And we're hoping also to um, to talk to some of the indigenous people on site. Um, of course, we're going to be with uh, Sasha Stone um, in in that specific area, and we're going to meet some of the indigenous people, which he's going to bring along as well. Uh, so it's going to be quite an event, um, and we're going to hum, of course, on this mountain. Uh, so in that time, we're not going to have any uh, technology with us because we don't want to interfere. Uh, in that process and also would be pointless because the zone of silence uh, doesn't uh, give the opportunity to be connected to anything because there's no signals. It's so amazing, right? How perfect is that? And is is the zone of silence where you'll be in Mexico the longest duration for the uh, eclipse? That's it right. Is. Yes, it is. Uh, four minutes, uh, 28 seconds, point one is exactly the longest duration. And that's what we're asking people to hum the extent of the, that's the time we're asking people to hum for us exactly that time. So we have just about, um, uh, uh, Ricardo, our scientist, is going to uh, put something up on the internet, which on, on the hum website, which is all the different timetables for the different countries so that people know exactly what time it is. Uh, they have to tune in. So that was quite important because many people were completely confused. There's so many different, um, so much different information out there, which is very confusing. Um, but uh, we do our very best to get it all, all out there, the whole information, so that everybody can access it. 
So how many people do you expect potentially will be humming at that moment? <laughs> Hard to know, huh? I've been told by some people uh, that it went global and it could be literally millions of people doing it. So it would be amazing. Um, so I hope that, yes, that's exactly the case. So, um, you know, and what, what easier thing to do? There's no, you don't have to learn it. You just can do it. So it's, it's just amazing. You just go into your heart center, close your eyes, connect with Mother Gaia, open your heart and and hum. <laughs> exactly. That's it's, awesome. it's, it's free it's, and everybody can do it. I love this. Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's really like a, it's a primordial sound. That means also it's, it's not just um, coming from the universe. It's part of our DNA. It's part of our blueprint. So and so it's a sound of creation. And again, that's that's something which is in all the waters. I have done this uh, research, which was connected to um, the megalithic sites, where we um, use certain sounds to communicate with uh, the stones of megalithic sites. And uh, again, it was the same frequency we used in that uh, specific case as well. Uh, that's that's a whole another story. But um, we have been intensively kind of researching this. Yeah. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I'm so grateful for you coming on and sharing with us and everyone learning about the water and about the hum and that we're all getting geared up and prepared for this moment of love and unity consciousness right at the same time. Um, I know you did this amazing experiment with the stones and I, don't, I know you're not feeling so great, but if you just give us a glimpse so people understand what you're talking about that just like the water, the stones that as well um, are the sentient live beings. So tell us what happened. Okay, we went to one of our favorite sites it's a uh, maiden stone circle, which is in situated in Cornwall. That's where I live in the UK. And uh, it's in Penwith, a beautiful site. And it's 19 standing uh, stones in a circle formation. And uh, uh, there are two, two stones as well, which are about 330 meter away, which is the uh, called this, the Piper stones or the Pipers. And um, so the uh, the legend or the folk folklore is that the pipers are playing the flute, and then the maidens, the stones, are are starting to dance. Uh, so from this folklore, I was very int intrigued uh, to find out what what it is all about because it sounded like um, there's a frequency involved, which would uh, uh, what we call in physics excite stones, and then maybe we can. Uh, connect to the stones and have a, um, a frequency which we can record. So that's exactly what we did. We used a certain frequency, played it into the stone, and then we uh, recorded it back and we had a huge delay. It should have taken 0 0.2 seconds. That's the same speed as I talk to you and you can instantly hear me. Um, so, and the, uh, the, the sound was delayed. It was like 1.2 seconds and 2.9 seconds and the second time we have done and repeated this again and it was the same outcome which is in physics really um, not possible so but not only that the stone has delayed the signal it also changed the uh, the sound it was longer uh, in the recording as the sound we played in the, into the stone and that is really due to the the crystal the rock, the rock crystal inside the granite, which holds tiniest amounts of water, like in form of water vapor, so so little that if you would open this kind of little crystal pockets up, it would just evaporate. But it doesn't matter how much it is because it is still the the, blue, the blueprint of water, and that carries, of course, because of its 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 ancient age. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the blueprint of, of the same creational sound, which is connected to the C4. And that was exactly the frequency we used as well. So it's all kind of connected and that kind of was leading us eventually to the hum. Um, and uh, then I knew there were so many synchronicities in ancient, in ancient civilizations as well, like in Turkey, um, where they um, have whole cultures uh, which are um, 
surrounding the bees and the beehive houses in Turkey. I mean, there's just so much. And the bees especially are very, very important in Egyptian times as well. So it's again, it's, it's all pointing out to this specific sound, to this hum. So there's a lot more to it than we, than we think. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's this primordial sound that unites everything, basically, is what you're saying, and brings it back into harmony. And so you had mentioned last time that the sound that you played to the stones that they responded to, if I'm correct, was it the whales? That's right, yes. So we, we used um, the same kind of frequency in that respect as the C4 note, and we played it to the stone. And uh, then we had for the first time uh, a response. So we did try so, so many different sounds and frequencies and nothing happened. And then uh, I, for some reason, I just suddenly thought it has to be the whale sounds because whale, water, frequency. So there is a link here and the primordial sounds which came from, from the cosmos into the oceans. And of course, then we have the whales which are connected to that and the sound of the whales itself has the same diversity as the, as the uh, primordial sound. So there is one specific frequency, but you have thousands of different harmonics. And that's the point. And that's why we as humans can do exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you pitch perfect. Um, there are so many different harmonics. We're all different. And that specific sound, which everybody can create, is in, in our own harmonic. So, and coming together with this many, many people, we will create a different um, range of different harmonics, but it will come together at the same kind of level. So it sounds like one sound, that's my point. And we have done that in the uh, Glastonbury Town Hall when we had, um, when I had a talk, uh, gave a talk just about, I uh, can't remember now, two weeks, three weeks ago. And, and we had 140, 50 people or so coming to this event, and um, we all hummed in the in the end, and it was incredible. So that really showed us how what what kind of um, strength that kind of sound has as well, because everybody was involved. There was a unity. There was so much love in that room. Um, it expanded to, to yeah. such extent, it was almost like we were all in a different reality. It was just mind blowing. And people afterwards, they were cheering and hugging each other. And it was just the most incredible event. I never ever have experienced anything like it. So for sure, there's something quite special about the hum. This is amazing. So gathering with others really makes a difference and and i've read and i've heard from people say that they've experienced the full solar eclipse that they feel connected to people the way that they haven't ever before that there's some something yeah. that happens yeah. yeah because in that time we are the closest to the earth's matrix there is something which i want to just really throw in before we finish this, but um, it's about an ancient text, which is uh, called the um, Substitute King. And the Substitute King, that's quite an interesting text. It's from 800 BC, um, Sumerian text. And um, it talks about how the kings and queens in that time would have a fake king and queen come into place when such event would occur. Um, it was usually the solar eclipse, which was more important. Sometimes they would do it also at the uh, lunar eclipse, but especially when a solar eclipse would happen, they would put uh, someone in place instead, and they would hide, the real king and the queen would hide. And the reason for that is because they knew in that time that the energies would change and it would be a window opportunity for humans to connect and then they would be scared that they would be overruled and lose their position as king and queens. So after this event, which could sometimes last like 100 days before and after that they would go into hiding, and then afterwards they would kill the substitute king and queen and just take their position again uh, until the next time. So that's something which is quite interesting, looking at what is happening at the moment to all the worlds around the world, especially the ones in Britain. Yeah. So there's a, a, a very 
strange similarity or synchronicity going on here. Interesting. So what you're saying is that others perhaps knew or had an understanding that during that moment, the ability for people to connect and make great change and potentially return to their sovereignty on a lot of levels is possible. Exactly. Well, yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is incredible. So I'm so excited. Like what a great time to be alive, right? Yes. <laughs> we get to experience this in just a few days. It's a, a week from tomorrow, everybody, is the solar eclipse. And we get to hum and love each other and be in nature and connect. And I'm just so grateful that you're bringing this awareness, the sound that's primordial that we all know, but we didn't know to do and to come together. And between you and Veda yesterday, we're learning so much about the water and its consciousness. And now that the stone has consciousness and we can communicate with it and now I'm tapping into the fairies and the elementals and the beings from the stars and the sea people. I mean, how much fun, right? It's like a whole another world coming alive <laughs> that uh, we get to see. Yes, yes. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think we, we've been there before as humans, you know, so we've been really much connected to our planet, to everything around us all the trees, all the plants, you know, all the animals. And, you know, so I think we just lost the ability to have that connection through our technology, especially um, all the Wi-Fi and these kind of things, you know, where we been, um, purposely have been di disconnected from, from nature. And uh, again, this is just a part of the whole game, isn't it? Um, that's where we need to step out of this and look around us. Uh, I see so many children who are glued to their devices and they do not see really what is around them and uh, it's time really to stop that and just take take our children out into the nature again and reconnect them just take the phone away and just take them out you know so and 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 to introduce them reintroduce them to 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 hug a tree to just be with plants you know just go for a good walk you know so in the woodlands or whatever you know, just make them aware and what kind of beautiful worlds that they live. And only then, you know, if we have that connection, we, we can sustain as humans as well, because otherwise, you know, God knows where we're ending, like in a world full of AIs. Um, you know, this, this, is, this is our window opportunity. This is, this is an amazing opportunity. And, and that's so true. And um, these children are filled with so many gifts and so much light. We have these beautiful star children coming in and uh, if, if they imagine the power that they have by connecting with mother Gaia and the energy and the information, they are reciprocal, but like back and forth. Right. I remember my kids, my kids are big, but um, I just unplugged my TV one day. My son was about three. I took it outside and I said, watch this. And I put it in the garbage and we didn't have TV in our house for a good 20 years, not till they went to college. And I was like, go outside and play. And I think that there's nothing more important than that, because it's also within that, that we develop uh, skills in terms of solving problems, of being creative, of figuring out how to get up that tree branch. I mean, connecting in with everything. We're receiving the ions. The We're, we're barefoot running in the grass. And yes. this is key, right? And if, if we lose this, and especially the children, which are the future, don't have that tactile connection and attunement to the earth, then we really have a big problem. So for all of you guys out there, just uh, get those kids out there and get their shoes off and barefoot right outside and climbing. And yeah, thank you for that reminder. It's so, so important. It is. It really is. So yes, that's yeah. exactly what people need to do. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you, my God, for taking out this time. I know you had Wi-Fi issues and link issues. Yeah. I think the matrix is already collapsing all around you, Alex. Like, right? It's just ready to dissolve. You've you've manifested that into reality already. <laughs> yeah. I think we just have to, as you know, technology can be very useful. I'm not saying that we have to, you know, stop using it, but use it in a different way, in a more responsible way. And uh, I think also the how it is created to control us is really not a good thing. So, you know, we can use it in the best possible 
way to, to go with us into the future. There's nothing stopping us doing that. But not in such a way that we lose ourselves as humans in into this technology and we don't know who we are. No, or connect in connection to each other where it becomes a babysitter for our children and and you know a distraction from relationships and all of that. So but it's a beautiful tool such as now without it, we would never meet you. We'd never be able to all be together. So like you say, there's yeah. the polarity, right? Of exactly. ever. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for your time. I will be humming with you and Debbie will be humming with you and everybody in this group and um, looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, we're going to do our own activation with Grandmother Spider at one o'clock and then everybody can get off and do their humming. <laughs> so. Please do not pay any attention to all the doom and gloom which is connected to the eclipse. That's another thing. You know, don't manifest something which you don't want to happen. So okay. don't be you know, this is also important because I hear all sorts of strange stories which are growing, you know, on the internet and just ignore it. Just ignore, just manifest something beautiful and positive. Exactly. All we have to do is go into our heart and uh, connect with the love and each other. And that's all. That's all that's needed. It only takes a few minutes. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you so much again. Many blessings. Happy holidays to those who are celebrating today. And thanks everybody who were able to pop in. I know it's uh, it's Sunday afternoon, but uh, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. For having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Much love to you. And All to right. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you soon.